Bermuda really is an isolated island. I mean, you know, we're you know 700 miles from Cape Hatteras. Uh, you know, we're a long way from the Caribbean, almost a thousand miles. So we're really out here. We're isolated because of the way the island formed. It sits on top of an extinct volcano that developed over a magma hotspot, and the sides are very steep. We're the only piece of land in this part of the North Atlantic, and so the ocean to Bermuda throughout its history has always been extremely important. Everything in Bermuda is intimately tied in with the ocean. It's, it's all around us. You're never more than about three quarters of a mile from it. Our ocean is everything to us. and It nourishes us you know, very substantially in terms of the foods we get from it. But for many Bermudians, being in the water, being on the water is really what makes life here so, so vibrant. I like the ocean because it has different creatures. Starfish. Sand. Wait, one thing? Lobster. Seaweed. Plankton. Lionfish. That's all I know. How the ocean behaves from a tourism perspective is very important. From employment to government revenues to entrepreneurial opportunities, tourism is hugely significant for Bermuda, right across the economy. If you look at Bermuda's development over the years, it developed into a business hub and has blossomed into the island now being a global insurance and reinsurance jurisdiction. It is now the staple or the key pillar for Bermuda's economy and everything about the ocean has an impact on us day in and day out. The ocean is, you know, the source of so much for us. It can be threatening. We, we are definitely affected by hurricanes and the ocean is mighty tempestuous. Bermuda is extremely susceptible to tropical storms, hurricane storms. You also have the impact of flooding um, and coastal erosion. So again, being isolated in the middle of the Atlantic, ocean and ocean risk is, an, is a big item for us. There is a correlation between the health of the ocean and the health of our tourism industry. If people stopped visiting Bermuda, the impact would be huge. Without a healthy ocean, there wouldn't be a healthy Bermuda. That's just the reality of it. Human activity has changed things so rapidly, um, and now the catch-up game with science, you know, it's just, we're way behind the ball, really. Almost all the science that's been done in the marine environment has been done in the shallow areas that are relatively easy to access. You have to actually go to depth in each particular spot to know what it's like. Deep ocean is a major part of the Earth system. It moves heat around the world, maintains our atmosphere at a comfortable temperature for us to live in, and the ocean absorbs about one third of the excess carbon dioxide we produce, and much of that is stored in the deep ocean. Words can't describe, just incredible. Never mind the experience, but to see that stuff, very cool. I won't sleep tonight. So the value of having these collaborations with scientists from outside of Bermuda is that, that to, they come with tools and resources that we can, can't ever hope to dream to have here. The concern is that you'll end up with a fit, a real... You know, we have a small community of scientists here. There's a bunch of very highly trained, well-qualified people, but collaborations with partner institutions in other countries bring different perspectives, bring more resources, and so it is always exciting to have the opportunity to work with a big international team.
Shiba nice. Dive, you get to there. The we just got to about there. there. But we still got, I mean, I understand why people are excited about space, but really, this is here. They sent these submarines down the side of the volcano. Now, we Bermudians all know that we live on top of a volcano, um, but we've never seen what it looks like down there at 1,500 feet. And I mean, it's just so thrilling. You have no idea how exciting it was, at least for me, to see, actually see the side of the volcano, this volcano that's always been a legend. transparent pressure holes in our submersibles enable us to witness people in the deep. And it's that single thing that creates the vital human link that we need to reconnect us with the ocean. It's classic exploration. It's a marriage between um, proper science, exploration and, and adventure together. So you, you, you're sort of hitting all, all the key buttons and inspiring. The important thing that the XL Catlin Deep Ocean Survey did was to bridge the gap between science and, let's say, the consumer. In order to convince people that we have changes going on in the ocean that we should be concerned about, we have to communicate it to them in a way that's going to not only capture their interest in the first place, but then inspire them to want to do something about it, or at least support people who are trying to do something about it. Boys and girls. First thing, what is an ocean? You can tell me what an ocean is. What, what is the ocean? Knowledge? Because our curriculum doesn't focus too much on what Bermuda, what the ocean is like in Bermuda, they am learning about it and then seeing how Axel actually did um, an expedition on this and it becomes very interesting. Everybody, what is it? It is important because then a lot of them can learn how to preserve. In some countries, the water is so unhealthy that it's basically toxic waste. If you touch it, your finger will like fall off or something. It's scary. They respond well. They, they love it. Once they are hooked on something, we will be on it for two, three weeks. I would get in the submarine, but I wouldn't dive because I'm too scared to dive. The hunger is there. They just need to be exposed to it more. Quite a bit uh, of knowledge has um, has come to light since we left the ship. I have been able to extract with, uh, with a lot of help from a lot of students, uh, thousands and thousands of specimens that we're currently working on. Uh, we definitely have many new species. The webinar was very cool because it was the first time that we were actually really able to hear what all the other scientists had done with the data that they collected. To hear, you know, all the new species that have been discovered and the range expansions that we've documented. And I can tell you, I think I have probably about 40 uh, or more new species of macroalgae. What? Um, two of the species that were collected at North Northeast that I'm working on right now are both species of genera which had not been found anywhere except New Zealand and Australia. <laughs> now, they segregated from the uh, Indo-Pacific species three to four million years ago. How did that happen? How do we end up plants that are very similar looking in Bermuda to ones in the Pacific? And it has to go back to the history of the formation of the Atlantic that took place about you know, three to five million years ago when Panama separated, came up to separate the Caribbean Atlantic from the Pacific. It's really easy to, to be unimpressed by, by many, many organisms. They don't have a whole lot of color or shape, um, but they all have a story and that story is buried in their evolutionary history. Just one sample from Bermuda can tell us 
so much about how ocean connectivity worked five million years ago. It's, it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. So we, we made some progress with the, the, the funding that the Necton provided. As you generate your list of, of what you found, which is, will be a very long list, uh, just send it to me and I can begin the accessioning process. And we want to make sure the material ends up in the most appropriate place so that it uh, continues to be valuable for future generations of biologists that will be fascinated by what we've discovered. It's quite exciting to know the breadth of knowledge that we're going to gain from this, you know, relatively short expedition that you can find so much biodiversity on these deep reefs. It's, it's pretty exciting. So as much as I know what that animal is, I don't know what that tube worm is, and there might be another animal on here. This is one of the species, Dystichopathy, so it hadn't been reported from Bermuda. It's hugely exciting to, to, to recognize that you know, we have a lot more diversity than we thought we had. For me personally, I now have more resources to draw on if, to answer future questions from, that, that come in. Or if I'm not here, and we don't last forever, you know, there's a, a record of information. We have a database here, which is now greatly expanded. We have more specimens. It had a great impact on my work. I was able to do several key dives uh, in order to collect these coral specimens. One of the publications to come out of Necton was the first recording of the deepest lionfish ever at 304 meters depth. We've got this data set that we would have never been able to have. And with that, it's basically jump-started ability to sort of get grants and funding to do further work. Conservation is really making good informed decisions. As things change over time, if you have a good baseline, and that's a big part of what Necton's given us, measure how you're doing uh, and use that information to make uh, good effective decisions. You don't really become a strong advocate until you see something. And I think that having that imagery really provokes people into action. Until they can really see and get a good sense of the types of organisms and the biodiversity, they're not really going to fight for it. I think that the XL Catalin Deep Ocean Survey is a remarkable piece of work that it's now up to Bermuda to leverage, frankly. Um, it's something that we can claim and amplify from a business perspective, uh, from a tourism perspective, from a conservation perspective. It enables us to show leadership. I think as a whole, society doesn't know enough about the ocean or about ocean risk. And we think it is our duty as a, a forward-thinking and innovative company um, to be at the forefront with scientists, with other business partners, so it's not just about sitting and waiting for something to come to us. We want to be innovative. We want to be forward thinking, forward looking. I hope that this will spur curiosity and investigation into deep reefs across the Caribbean and really globally, like a new frontier of research, really. Getting the next generation to understand that there is this massive world down there beneath the ocean, and it's their world, more than anyone else's really, is vitally important. And if they understand that, and they understand how that world interacts with their own personal world on shore, then they're more likely to understand why it's important to preserve that world beneath the ocean.